so we are going to discuss today on the latest education policy 2020 which was introduced before the world on 29th of july 2020 long after a long we had an excellent education policy in front of the academicians and uh, now it is at the verge of implementation at some places it is already implemented to begin with i would like to share the flow of my presentation i would be introducing the policy and in context keeping the context of the same i'll be sharing the challenges faced in its implementation in hei and school organization and can there be some strategy to effectively implement this thing so the policy it was released on 29 july by the approval of union cabinet and this policy is a vast document it comprises of 27 chapters and four parts the vision of this policy is to ensure that it makes the for a future learners a super power of knowledge it aims that the students the learners they are rooted in indian ethos the vision of this policy is that the learners they develop the pride in being indian not only in their thoughts but also in their spirit intellect and they become the global citizen the vision of the policy is to make the learners such as citizens such that the world becomes a global village vasudeva kutumbakam which is our indian traditional value to this policy the policy makers want to establish this the principle of this nep 2020 is as you can see in this picture it has several domains first and foremost it wants to attain foundational literacy by grade 3 today the world particularly in india we are facing challenge in the basic reading writing and basic arithmetic literacy so the first and foremost principle is to attain foundational literacy this policy another vital principle is flexibility it is providing flexibility to the learner how we will see it and explore even more provision in this policy is multidisciplinary and providing holistic education it is not it is not skin bound into partition thick walls of a particular discipline it provides flexibility to the learner to have the learning of his or her choice across the different domains it provides it has the provision to enhance creativity and critical thinking far away from rote learning which the current education policy and current education system is Uh, you know forcing the learners away from that it is promoting creativity critical thinking and most important domain and important principle is multilingualism it is emphasizing the learning in the mother tongue how and what are the per perspectives and challenges we are discussing another important principle is research and innovation out of box thinking promoting the learning experience to the learners in such a way that it can promote among the learner innovation can they become entrepreneurs can they think out and can they dip open different parameters another important domain is thereby they want to establish this can all be attained by good governance and empowering one and all so that they can perform the very best in the given scenario and another important principle is fostering unique capabilities whatever are the unique capabilities of each learner they want to surface it and want to sharpen it so that the individual come out to its very best as i mentioned that this policy is having four parts the first part of this education system it comprises of school education the picture here it portrays it is presenting the contrast of the education system which was existing 10 plus 2 all these years and now it is emphasizing on the main heart of this education policy that is it is emphasizing on 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 we all are 
might be aware but i would like to just brush up on this that what does this five years are the foundational years very it is again divided into two parts the foundational age the first three years okay of this uh, education policy it will be free schooling initial education policy which is 10 plus 2 it was considering the learner from the age of 6 but now this education policy is fostering on holistic development of the learner so it is considering the learner it is taking care of the learner from its very primary age from its very initial age that is from age of 3 years so from the initial years for 3 years it will be considered as the preschool or anganwadi what we used to say and the later two years which will be standard one and standard two these five years have been defined as the foundational age and it is said that during this age it is the time when the uh, the learner is very much receptive and most of the uh, critical most of the abilities are being you know, captured very easily and so the policy makers want to focus on the learners right from this age and they want to make them the learning which is a playful learning which can be you not know, uh, which can be activity based learning play based learning and their which will be followed by no examination so the learner will be only focused on developing different okay, enhancing his environment and capturing the values and without any burden of exam they are exposed to develop different skills motor skills and uh, different uh, physical skills this will be followed by three years which will be from standard third to standard fifth that is age group of 8 to 11 and they have defined this age this stage of education policy as preparatory stage and during this stage the learners are given more of experiential learning exposure to experiential learning as you all are aware learning by doing the students will be exposed to the to the different learning experiences whereby they don't have to only read and listen to their professors but the learning experiences they are appealing to the education educator to design the learning experiences whereby they can have experiential learning and thereby internalizing different concepts so that is a preparatory stage and that is from 3 to 5 years from where the examination will begin evaluation and assessment will begin for the this will be followed by the middle age that is from class 6 to class that the basics of the different um, complex learning will start for them. Basics of uh, no, ICT based learning, different types of um, vocational based learning, which will initiate in this middle age. And then there is the secondary stage, which will be from class 9 to class 12. So, in this new education policy, also the learner is with the school system till the age of 18. But now the exposure and the type of activities that will be given at different stage has a vast, vast difference. And there is vast difference in the way the curriculum will be transacted, vast difference in the way the learner will be evaluated. And thereby we, we aim that the, the learner also will come out with a different outcome. The main aim of this education policy is it is purely outcome based it is based on obe that is outcome based education i request the learners uh, embassy all all the people to kindly excuse me for this sound for some time if we highlight on the school education the policy says that if we highlight on the different stages this picture is showing the first is early childhood care and education the policy says that this is some part which was which was not taken care of all these years in the education system and as i mentioned that the early initial stage of the learning of the le it is such a stage of the learner where they are capturing the different qualities different things they are very receptive at this stage so the policy makers want to take special care at this stage on the on the type of on the type of education that is given early childhood care and education they want to train the teachers they want to make a special 
type of activities for the learner at this age and therefore they have made a special policy of early care early childhood care and education and by 2030 they want to attain horo horo expertise horo uh, you know horoness in this early care childhood so that all the education is uh, provide education is made available to one and all from especially those who are unprivileged those who are at road uh, those who are at remote uh, places on the unprivileged people they want to make it available for them another important parameter in school education is foundational literacy and numeracy as i said that the another important uh, target of this education policy is to attain writing learning skills to one and all by 2030 it has been observed that more than 3.2 crore the research says more than 3.2 crore of the students they are being dropped out from the regular system of education at different points all the way from the primary till the higher secondary education school education aims to stop this dropout rate and provide universalization in access of education at all stages from pre primary till the secondary stage and for this for this they have they have taken up two main points and the first point is that they have made they are, they are targeting to improve the infrastructure at school level may it be the uh, textbooks may it be the reading material or may it be the school uh, uh, infrastructure and second important thing is they have tried they are they are appealing to improve on access to school or convenience communication to the school commuting to the school by making it cheaper making it even more feasible and particularly uh, for girls safe and safe and sound uh, commute to the school whereby they can reduce the dropout rates and make education available to one and all another is restructuring school curriculum and pedagogy definitely if such type of education is to be given it cannot be given in a normal lecture way method so they want to restructure the pedagogic strategy they want to restructure the curriculum which can develop among the learner holistic learning okay it can be of flipped classroom type definitely it cannot be in the initial stage but from the preparatory stage in the middle stage they want to give experiential learning right which can which can make the learner participate in the learning process engage more effectively in the learning process and the teachers become more of a facilitator type so there is need of restructuring of school curriculum they have proposed to make it okay that pedagogic strategies should be changed the reading material it should be more playable and simple more interesting and more accessible uh, for the learner okay which can be in their own language which can be more colorful in the way they can take it and in the multiple forums it can be available that is it is focused there and holistic development that is they don't want to confine the learner to be only maybe in only one domain of his liking they want them to be a good individual a good citizen with various life skills 21st century skills they want to develop that means they should be a good individual they should be a good human being along with that they should be technocrats they should be able to retrieve content good time manager and they come out as a holistic and good citizen so for that they have they have suggested for holistic development for the learner to the curricular practices for that the academicians are required to design such a curriculum as i mentioned before they have emphasized very strongly on multilingualism it is said that it is observed researches are mentioning that learning takes place very easily when the concept is delivered in their mother tongue but today's curriculum our education system is such it is confined dominantly maybe in english language or in the regional language when it comes to regional language at times there is scarcity or there is challenge with regard to the Uh, educational material in that language so the learners are facing difficulty when it comes to 
higher education, when it comes to middle school and higher education, even the parents are not able to help the learner. So they are telling that if the education at least till the age of six years, if, if it is given in their own language, then the basic learning will be thorough. And after that, as per the choice, as per the call given, taken by the learner, it can be then delivered in the professional language that is English language. And for that, this policy is appealing that all the all the study material, the infrastructure should be in different language. And that will help the learners to understand the concept well and come out as excellent learners, excellent professionals. Then curricular integration of essential subjects and skill development. So they want that the core curriculum, it should not comprise only of the subjects that are definitely along with those subjects, there can be skill enhancement subjects also, maybe like archery, optometry, maybe like embroidery, maybe like gardening, which can develop their skills, which at the later stage can help them to take up as their uh, maybe vocational skills, as their career skills as well. So they want to root it from the school education so that it can the carpentry, you know, such type of skills they are, they are proposing to be instilled in the school education. And if such type of dynamic education is to be instilled through this policy, which is being appreciated by the academicians across the country, the, we need to empower the teachers. So the most important thing that is that the policy is telling is to empower the teacher by knowledge, by training. By, by the way the curriculum will be developed, the, by the way the curriculum will be transacted. For that, the policy says that it's very important to recruit quality teachers who are well-educated, well-qualified. Okay? And the policy very strongly also emphasizes that the teachers should not be involved in the work other than the teaching, research, and innovation. Unlike current times where the teachers being meticulous, being systematic and organized in their work procedures are involved in many of the other clerical work as well. And that is that is that is wasting, that is you know, distracting their creativity and their effort in in uh, in uh, facilitating the learners to attain their goals. So policy very strongly mentions that the teachers should be involved strictly so far as possible in the academic work and for them, in-depth training should be provided to the teachers. They should be provided with the required learned materials, learning materials, and they should be provided with the digital infrastructure and training to access that. They should be made aware of the possible infrastructure that is available to the uh, so that they can enable the learners, uh, facilitate the learners to avail this all facility. Recruitment and deployment. For this also, the policy mentions that there should be proper norms and there should be proper policies and rules and regulations where, whereby the teachers should be recruited from the region near of their habitat so that it is easily accessible for them. If they are at ease managing their family, they will be giving the most and that will also amount, that will contribute paramountly in the in, in the you know, uh, efficiently implementing this policy. Equitable and inclusive education. So the, the policymakers want one and all to have the access to this, to the all the academic uh, opportunities that are available. Those who are um, from the, from the uh, you know, reserved categories, those who are from the low socioeconomic status, those who are, those who are from the challenged economic physical uh, uh, they all should have the access to the educational opportunities. So the school infrastructure, the educational material that, that is to be developed, it should be such that it should be accessible to one and all. It should be easily and in a very cheap way, in a multiple uh, dimensions, it should be available so that it is available to all the, um, each and every aspirant of education can make the best use of that. Efficient resourcing and effective governance. This all is only possible if the management of the organizations which are delivering this are efficient. So first and foremost, the policy indirectly says that there is a dire need 
to provide training to the to the management of different food organizations so that they are very clear what is the vision what is the mission of this nep 2020 and to implement it what are basic facilities and the basic procedures they need to frame so that it can be implemented to its various so these are the broad parameters of the school education that the nep 2020 shares each of these parameter in the policy document has been mentioned in great detail and very well it is being mentioned here now coming to the second part of this policy that is higher education higher education it the policy mentions that it is first the first clause that it is mentioning it it is of holistic education the learners or the, the late adolescent students we need to ensure that they come out as a complete and whole citizens a perfectly ready to work professional we put in the society and for that the educational practices at the higher education level should be should be of what standard optimal learning environment that means the educational organizations should have such an environment which is conducive which is attracting the learner to come there which is attracting which is making them feel at home a second home and thereby they they exercise their maximum time they exercise all their potential to grab maximum opportunities to learn the motivated energized and capable faculty this all is possible time and again the national education policy is emphasizing on one point that it can be possible only by making the faculty the teacher the educator you know equip and empowered so that they can facilitate all this so there is a dire need of conducting various training programs webinars seminars various educational forums whereby the educators who will be delivering this syllabus this curriculum they are empowered and equipped to and energized transact it to its very best to its very effect which has been conceptualized by the policy makers in teacher education the next important domain that we have touched is on teacher education where they are mentioning that the educator should be well qualified they should they are emphasizing that they should have all the professional degrees and with all the training and equipment with which they will deliver this program revamping vocational education they want that now the education that is that will be through this it should be vocation providing it should not end up into just having the degrees it should enable the learner to end up in one or other vocation which will help them to become entrepreneurs which will help them to become efficient and productive professionals it is professional education which we just like it, maybe in medicine maybe in management maybe in commerce maybe uh, uh, nursing or physiotherapy pharmacy so the education system should have the curriculum which will generate different professionals which are ready to work in society promoting high quality research so it research should not only end up into a new document which can be there maybe in the library but it should end up into a new knowledge which will solve the real life problem which will enable to serve some benefit to the society and for that they are they have formed various bodies which will promote innovation and high quality research again like the school education for higher education also this holistic development of the learner of the professional it is possible only by good effective governance and research. then transforming the regulatory system the regulatory system unlike which is existing in the current time they want it that the the way the teachers the way the system it is existing it should have an easy and scalable way of development for the cadres of the teachers for the way the curriculum time and again it should be revamped and regulated 
there should be a system whereby there is monitoring and uh, assessment periodic assessment of the uh, curriculum that is being de developed that is being transacted and so that there is there is uh, innovation and there can be updation periodic so transforming the regulatory system is being proposed by the new education policy for higher education and again at higher education level also they are proposing that the degree programs should be delivered promoted in indian languages art and culture it should be an integral part of each and every learner it should not be confined to only one domain they don't want the education to be delivered in the stringent bounds hard bound walls it should be multidisciplinary this is a very important message this is an important point which they want to accomplish by this new education policy so the degree program to be delivered in indian language and for that they are proposing that the learning materials it should be in those indian languages the professors they should be trained to deliver the content in this indian languages so one and all more and more learners can be benefited from this and we can have even more uh, you know uh, enrollment in not only in the initial stage of the learning but also at higher education level technology use and integration this is a very important point which is being framed by the policy makers they are they are emphasizing on digital education they are emphasizing on teaching which is integrated in depth with the by integrating the technology and for that they are emphasizing that the organizations which are educational organizations need to be uh, technology enabled the classrooms which are technology enabled only that will facilitate to deliver the content of such a type which is which will generate the learners which are with, with the 360 degrees uh, values which are holistic in their approach and to come out as a you know, excellent individuals so the national education policy at higher education level it is proposing that more and more digitization more and more accessibility equitability it is uh, it is emphasizing on you know, in making the learner vocation ready entrepreneurial they don't want the learner to be confined to only one domain it is in emphasizing on multiple entry and exit it is emphasizing on multidisciplinary approach towards the education so this is a uh, uh, unlike the current education policy unlike the last policy which was with, uh, in 1986 after the long time the education policy which has now come it is suggesting institutional restructuring for delivering this there will be a uh, no paradigm shift in the way the education will be should be transacted i hope i am reaching you all yeah definitely ma'am I have a small question. You all are aware, but even then, I would like to ask. I suggest you can write the answer in the chat box. Under whose leadership was the national education policy? I have not mentioned here, but 2020, the latest education policy form. Can you please write in the chat box? This will just. Share me. Give me a feedback that you all are with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, as Madam has rightly written, the new education policy was formed under former Space Research Organization Chief Isro Chief Sir. the krishna swami kasturi rangan and the draft was initially submitted in 2019 thank you for all the reflections that you have those who have responded and really thankful to all of you going further we have now i have just shared in very brief the first two part of the policy that is part 1 that is on school education part 2 on secondary on the higher second and that is higher education and part 3 are the other key areas and focus areas which are 
which are emphasizing on professional education maybe in physiotherapy pharmacy education you know which are lending the students at the end of the four year programs five year programs which will end up the learner into one or other profession and ensures vocation for the learner so it is emphasizing on professional education adult education and lifelong education we are in the era of lifelong education our education system current even this policy is very strongly emphasizing that the education should not start stop at the end of degree program or master's degree program they are emphasizing on skill development knowledge enhancement through lifelong education by certification by virtual learning there are n number of ways that they should come up even more profoundly so that it can facilitate the learner for lifelong learning promoting of indian language art and culture it should not be confined only to the learners who are opting for art or performing arts even the arts the, the the learner who is from engineering domain or who is from commerce domain can explore some part of this as for his choice and thereby he can become a comprehensive he can become a holistic learner he can come out he, he, he can and help uh, enhance his personality promotion of indian language right those languages which are regional languages and which are not given emphasis i think this policy will give opportunity to to surface such indian language our country is you know showing great diversity in various parameters and one of the important parameter is diversity in languages we are having so many different languages and different forms of art and culture this policy through its uh, propositions will give chance for development of this promotion of our old indian culture art and languages it is very strongly integrating time and again on the in immense use of technology integration of technology in in the transaction uh, of the uh, content in the transaction of curriculum and therefore they are indirectly uh, emphasizing that we need to make the teachers techno savvy we need to make the learners explore the different parameters different uh, for platforms that are available for learning and to facilitate that their educator needs to be empowered so uh, they are emphasizing on technology uh, use of technology integration we are currently living in a yantra yug right our learner today all is also his favorite gadget is technology so i while teaching uh, while at work in my uh, workplace also i i request teachers to come out with all the possible ways that they are aware of to facilitate their part of learning through technology because with that the learner gets associated very easily and they enjoy when they may be assessment or may be introduction or may be even more exploration the policy also says the same tech use of technology and integration of technology in teaching online and digital education it's indirectly emphasized on moocs okay how can when we come on lifelong learning they are telling that more and more platforms we need to um, you know we need to uh, introduce these online platforms of learning to the to the learners from particularly in the higher education stages it should be closely integrated in the regular curriculum and i am really happy to share that at my workplace at parvi university we have integrated it we have successfully completed one semester with most of this integrated very well we are still you know assessing and trying to modify as and when as it is proceeds uh, no as it is progressing gradually so the policy is also emphasizing on online and digital education then establishing digital infrastructure this all will be possible only if there is free infrastructure free internet across the campus if the teachers are in, if they are equipped with adequate access of the digital uh, gadgets digital utility of them Uh, no there are so many platforms which government has also come out with like diksha platform is there for school education likewise there are so many different type of platforms and so much of infrastructure digital infrastructure also has been developed to access that most important is that the educational organization should have the digital infrastructure so the policy is emphasizing on establishing such digital infrastructure so 
if we look on the major hits of this national education policy it is focusing on distance learning open and distance learning they don't want to confine the learning only in the four walls only in the school or maybe in the college there are so many online learning platforms there are so many online learning uh, you know platforms and students if the, uh, the educators need to orient the learners to uh, make the best use of this open distance learning and develop the multiple types of learning multiple more than uh, dual degrees and different type of degrees they can explore and um, enhance their skill and competencies to so focus on open distance learning establishing national research forum they are emphasizing so much on research and innovation so the uh, so for that developing various you know, training sessions developing various forums whereby the research guidance and funds can be given main important thing for establishing quality research is funds also so establishment of national research forum is to enhance the research Uh, in its very best, such that it can solve real life problems, and more and more research can come out uh, to to reach the need of the society. He is emphasizing on multidisciplinary education. I am really happy to share that where I am working, we have successfully completed one semester of multidisciplinary education, where former graduate has an opportunity to learn the subjects of maybe law or maybe management. or may you can learn the subjects of diverse uh, domains other than this. so the policy is emphasizing and for this collaboration for its development of such a such a system which can provide learner with the opportunity to have multidisciplinary education so another highlight another major point important and very good point of this education system is it is emphasizing on multidisciplinary education it is emphasizing on multiple entry and exit point this is a very good point very unique i would say a unique point of this education system that it is not stopping the learner no it is not it is thereby promoting you know, helping in preventing the dropouts maybe due to any reason if the learners are want to discontinue from a degree program it is providing opportunity to rejoin that as and when it is required it, it is feasible for them and at the point where they are leaving this they are also they are appreciating the extent of work that they have done i will show you some slide later on on more on this multiple entry and exit suppose a learner is uh, enrolling in a degree program and after one year if he is if he is discontinuing then it can be rewarded by giving a certificate program after two years it can be rewarded by diploma after three years then they can be given a degree or if they have enrolled in a four year degree program they can after three years can be awarded by advanced diploma likewise there are different ways in this in this policy which is providing the learner different exit points and again after several years of or maybe up to two three years of work they want to gain that final degree again entry is there so multiple entry and exit provision is there in this policy continuous and holistic education which i have been mentioning and teaching in the regional languages okay so the last and the fourth important point of this policy is that implementation so how an educational organization can implement this policy and for this their broad four parameters can be they can frame their own vision and mission what is the policy and keeping that policy in focus what will be their vision and mission to implement this policy planning budget allocation and then execution of plan and as and when it is being executed continuously they need to assess it periodically at every small point there should be a system it should be ingrained at a entry point itself which can assess it periodically and with the feedback attain from all the stakeholders who are in that who are in that uh, nep enabled uh, syllabus who are delivering who are receiving who are practicing from them taking the feedback and with their modification making it even more in the way the policy makers have suggested to attain its real vision and mission so these are the four points for implementation now i have one more question for the house with due permission of the chair 
can you please respond to this question at which stage are the vocational classes introduced in the national education policy 2020 can i request the house to respond in the chat box based on the points which i just discussed at which stage of school education are the vocational classes introduced in the national education policy Would the participants, can I request you to reflect in the chat box? Hello? Six on six onwards. Six years on, okay, fine, fine, that's fine. Anyone else? Thank you, madam, for your response. Yes, it is yes, six it's... onwards, and also it is at very elementary stage in the pre in the preparatory stage, and more of it is in the in the secondary stage from class nine to class twelve. It is actually functional in the secondary stage. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you, all of you, those who have responded. Now, I would like to draw the attention of the House towards the challenges in implementing the National Education Policy 2020. Before I touch this point, any questions? Any reflections? Any questions? We'll take it at the end, ma'am. Okay. Can I move further? Thank you. Okay. So, challenges for implementing the National Education Policy as per the research okay, at national level, it is observed that almost 78% of institutions, they have though appreciated this policy, they are mentioning that there is inadequate technological infrastructure. Time and again, the policy at different stages of education, it is mentioning that there should be you know, digital infrastructure, there should be digital awareness, there should be integration of digitalization in transaction. But the main challenge is the inadequate technological infrastructure. And to have that at beginning itself, it is a challenge. Maybe over the years to go, it may develop, but to begin with, the major uh, point where they are facing the challenge of you know, digital infrastructure is inadequate. Outdated hardware and connectivity, <laughs> challenges of having quality connectivity in the in the premise, insufficient digital resources and challenges in the education system. At national level, if we see the challenges that are faced, first and foremost is capacity building. The policy is ready for us, but now when we are at the door to implement it to its very best, first and foremost, we need to ensure the capacity building. That means we need to ensure, as I mentioned before also, that those who will be implementing are the study materials as per that or not? Are the content which will be delivered, the textbooks, the study materials, is it as per that level or not? Are the transactors, the educators being trained for that or not? The vision and mission, the outcomes, are they being shared with them or not? Are they ready to transact this or not? So there is dire need to conduct rigorous, you know, rigorous training and capacity enhancing of the uh, those people who are delivering this governance management bodies in these educational organizations they need to internalize this they need to conceptualize this and need to make the facilities available because however fine the implementers might be however effective and but unless the support of the management is not there this will not come into picture infrastructure and the challenge then culture there is a national taboo all these years we have been learning in a particular way so if we say that the class policy is providing provision of multiple entry and exit then are the learners and their social family and background ready for this after they come from the job will they be accepted in such a learning dynamics hmm, that uh, maybe they will be not very much uh, mature to, in contrast to the learners with whom they are gaining the later part of the degree so will which such dynamics of the culture, social background help them to explore and exercise and use 
is multiple entry exit platform likewise many other cultural taboos also will be there it also comes out as one of the challenges research and innovation it needs proper guidance proper uh, financial help or proper intellectual help the experts and we need help to come out in its way so that is also a challenge which is today pursued by the by the experts uh, at higher education level at national level also when we come at the higher education level as i just mentioned provision of certification multiple entry and exit right so the, the system in the educational organization should be tuned enough to monitor there is another one thing which is very they have spoken on credit no credit banks the, the learners will have the facility of credit banks they can have their degree from different organization and their credit bank will help them uh, uh, to keep the record of their previous learning and they can develop on further on that so are the educational organization ready for that or not this is a very important question and uh, to what extent they are ready and to what extent they will provide feasibility and ease to the learner to exercise and use this policy orientation towards multidisciplinary education now when we say that the educational organizations should provide multidisciplinary opportunity to learn then are there the <coughs> are there the professor the domains which are uh, providing this opportunity in the given arena of learning will it be feasible for the learner to ex use that multi multiple domains this is also coming as a connectivity of subject Uh, availability of expert, availability of educational uh, content, then feasibility and you know, regulation of all this is a, a question. Is it is a challenge? Manpower condition, as I mentioned, that first the entire paradigm shift is there. So man manpower training and mindset needs to be groomed to uh, transact such an education. Research and innovation activities. so there should be regulation in these activities there should be orientation in terms of uh, availing different facilities uh, in service research along with the work and do research government has also come out with so many different provisions so making the people who are actually at grassroots aware with this and enable access to all these facilities to what extent will it be possible it is a question and it comes as a challenge at higher education level multilingualism and employability as i mentioned before also if we want to have this multi it is said that if we are generating the learner who are learning in their own language definitely the learning will be in depth but then when it comes to be employed at international level will they be employed will they be effectively employed because if they are learning in this language at when they are presenting themselves at international level will they be so feasible in expressing themselves it is also come at as a challenge digital infrastructure and digital connectivity this also i mentioned before that the, the premise needs to be developed with the help of the managing managing bodies and with adequate funding yes for all this implementing this uh, if we want to create a holistic learner if we want to create a vasudeva kutumbakam if we want to develop a global uh, citizen we need such type of infrastructure and for that funding planning of that funding the availability of that funding periodically at every stage is a is a question and at this point it can be taken as a, as a challenge likewise if we go to the school education the challenges can be orienting uh, change in the pedagogic practices now where we are facing challenge of the educators coming to the anganwadi or coming to the primary school especially in the remote area in the distant area there to implement this policy with such you know activity based learning uh, play based learning we need to have the such educators at that level to effectively realize the 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 mindset with which this policy makers have mentioned those things so orienting change in pedagogic practices among the educators capacity building thereby among the pro and professional development activities uh, curricular there is a paradigm shift in the curricular activities unlike the what we had in the, our anganwadi what we had in albal mandis 
when it comes to this school, now implementing this policy, we need a rigorous change, not training, I will say time and again, because that is the heart of the success of this policy. So at this point, it is coming as a challenge. And then if, if we are implementing it, we, before we actually put it, we should have a sound system of assessing, assessment and evaluation fair and enough, which is not, not bounding the learner, which is not discouraging the learner, but at the same time, it is giving awareness to them that how much development is there and what the required, what modification is required. So such type of assessment system needs to be discussed and developed and should be shared with the educators beforehand, which at this point, it becomes as a challenge. So these are some of the uh, points which are coming as challenges.